All right, we're rolling. Rolling, 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 ride. Whoosh. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Outer Belt. I am Patrick. I am Chili. I'm Buttermilk. I'm Eric. And I'm Jerry. And we are the Outer Belt. Have we given up on our nickname for Eric? I thought he was going to do Slim Jim. I thought so. Our, um, uh, our, our pretzel. Slim Shady. Slim, Sh- Slim something. You can't do Slim Shady. Uh, we ran it by the copyright lawyers. And they said, no, that wouldn't work. Let's do Slim Shade. Slim Sh- he doesn't wear hats. We can just do Slick Shady Slim. What about Lampshade? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, that sounds wrong. All kind of wrong. Any, I apologize. I was thinking like cinnamon twist. Could be. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? What do you want to be called? I like Slim Jim. Slim Why do Jim, we not right? have your voice? Where'd that go? Sorry. We have your voice. Talk, Eric? No, you don't. Oh, there it is. I hear it. Keep talking. Uh, I can't hear myself. No, I can't either. Talk. Hello? Oh, there Testing. you are. That's better. It's coming in. Oh, well, hello. Yep. I don't hear myself now. Nice. Oh. Now Jerry's off. Oh, now we've got crackles. Hello. Hello. It's right. much a one-time take. Right. Granted, Jerry? this could be in there. Hey. Exactly. It could be. Hey. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Show the people what it's really hello. like. Hello. 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 There I am. There Excellent. I am. All right. You two talk together. Hey, Eric. Hey, Jerry. I like technical difficulties. You. Yeah, now you're too loud. I think it shows people what it's really like behind. On this side of the camera. Wait, they see what it's like on this side of the camera. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could be, be all sorts of ready and then life. It's just like trucking. You can be all sorts of ready and something happens. Absolutely, you can. For example, Vince. Patrick. <laughs> Jerry. Patrick. We're just going to throw it around the room. Yeah. Patrick. You could be on your way, though, and you could have done a perfect P. Free trip and everything, and there could be that one finagly item you didn't see that maybe popped your tire. Or that's, that's a, something out of your control. Or like, a light went out. Or you or you pull out of the parking lot and immediately get stopped by a train. Immediately. And then immediately. And then when the train completely passes you, it backs it, up. It just stays. No, it just stays down. The guardrails just stay down, and you can't move. Oh. And yeah. so the train's gone, and you just see ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ding, I ding. saw that picture. I knew right where you were at. Yeah, <laughs> right that up front. Today. Just barely left the yard. Train. Yeah. So why did it had it not passed its marker? To so I thought it up? was I thought it was broken, but actually, when I finally did cross the road, not the road. What do they call that? The tracks. tracks. When I finally did cross the tracks, uh, the train w- dropped off its cars. They'll do that. They'll just drop in that particular section. Mm-hmm. They'll just drop a car and go run and grab something else. And then they'll come back and pick up that car and keep going. It looks like they dropped it in the area that um, where the signal still thinks the there's a train there. Uh, yeah, it didn't it didn't quite pull it far enough. Oh, yeah, it's aggravating. I know. Yeah. CSX, we're listening. Or we, we're looking at you, rather. What did you say? I heard you say when you could be also lights. That's what you said. Yeah. 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 How about a windshield wiper? Maybe a check. No, those, those always work. What if the rubber accidentally flies off from a hard rainstorm or something? Does that ever happen? What if you pull up to a fuel island and go to clean your windshield and clip the windshield wiper and it comes off? It's possible. Yeah. It, it's happened to me. Yeah. Luckily, at a truck stop, I can go inside and buy another one. You know what I hated? When I was at the truck stops, my like first going out there, not knowing anything about trucking at all, mm-hmm. outside of being able to do a pre-trip, uh... In the winter, in the you know snow, um, or not in the snow. I'm sorry, we were uh, summertime. Bugs were out, yes. so we started in the winter. So there's relatively no bugs. Moving to summertime, springtime, summertime, Ooh. it's like, oh my gosh, these bugs on the windshield, yada yada yada. Yeah. So I bought the expensive, um, fancy green yeah. bug be gone, oh, whatever yeah. you uh, windshield sure. wiper fluid, and uh, it worked great. Loved it. And then I cleaned my windshield one time at a truck stop, and they used the blue stuff in there. I didn't realize those two don't mix. Blue and green don't mix? And it, No, and you get a nice film across your windshield, oh. and it just kind of looks cloudy from that point on. Yeah. I don't recommend anybody use the green stuff. Yeah. Just stick with good old-fashioned $2 a gallon blue. Buy it at Walmart. Save your money. Like it ain't $2 a gallon no more. At Walmart? Yeah. No. 
I know eventually we went to like a squirt bottle of just pure solution and we'd give it a shoo, 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 Yeah. Before you started, you know. Not like, not while was, you're no, driving. No. No, but that like. That was, we, we rescued a truck. Or we, we recovered a truck up north in the winter and the washer fluid they had froze. put in the truck had frozen. Yeah. So we're driving through a snowstorm and I was fine until I got behind another truck or another truck came in front of me and the mud off their tires, the dirt off their tires and yeah. the sand would kick up on the windshield and I couldn't clear it off. So I had to find another truck that was spraying clear or just water off the road to, to get my windshield yeah. clean. Uh, so we finally pulled over. We were, I was following Melissa. She was in, in our truck. I was following her and we had a squirt bottle in the truck. That we would use anyway, full of that stuff. Yeah, but we would do that when we got to a truck stop. So and it was really bad. Like yeah. bugs everywhere. Yep. So that was like our pre-wash. I'm sorry, I I, I said that was a different time, but yes. you're right. No, but, but you it would, was our pre-wash. You but would then, pre-wash. But then we did fill that water squirt bottle with with negative twenty to help clean my windshield. I'd stop every ten miles, pull it to the side of the road, get safe, spray the windshield, wash it, wash it, and continue driving. Makes sense. I felt that was safer than driving with a dirty windshield or a nasty windshield. Absolutely. So. And we've had and, and once they freeze, there's really it's hard, extremely hard to thaw them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um oh, yeah. I know we've had trucks come in like maybe they get in in like October. Mm-hmm. So it's still pleasant outside and um maybe they got to go to a body shop or whatever. So they end up being like December or January before they run out. And the whole time we didn't realize it had summer blend in there. And so now it's like all right, a team is inbound. Trucks almost ready, but but the washer fluid now is now a solid ice right. block. What yeah. do you do? So we've been able to get it to out of the shops, let them just close it in the shop yeah, overnight. Keep it warm. And uh especially if it's overnight, then the next morning you show up and it's it's thawed, drain all of it out and then top it off with the uh, negative 20, but it's a it's a pain cuz even even if you can get the tank thawed, you the still got ice still in the lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you really got it. Yeah. The only solution really is just warm the truck up. What um, does it make we more? S- do oh, sorry. Does it make yard. more sense to use the negative twenty all the time? You can't get it. A lot of stores pull oh, it. A sorry. lot of stores I pull it during the, during the year. Plus, in the south, they don't even know what it is. They have no idea. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No clue. Sorry, I did not mean to cut uh, you off there. One, two things. One, I didn't know there was a negative twenty or a zero or a different temperature. Until I got on the road. Um, two, in the yard, what we do is about October. When trucks come in, we go through our checklist. That's one of the things we checked is how much washer fluid's in it. We top it off with negative 20 starting in October. And then about March-ish, we'll start topping off with the summer formula. That makes Not sense. the green stuff, yeah, but the blue stuff. So, And I'll, I'll tell teams when I'm doing my walk around with them, this is about when I start topping off with whatever fluid. So just so they have an idea. Makes but sense. We, we get it that. Was, we I, don't get true negative twenty, but we get good enough. Working. Sure. It doesn't get negative twenty here in Columbus, right. so that's not really ever an issue. It does get zero. Sure. Um. So a summer blend, which is good to thirty-two degrees, is yeah. obviously frozen at that point. Um. But getting it, even if you dilute the the mixture down to where you're negative ten, yeah, it's or something zero. or zero. Yeah. It's something. <clears throat> and then if you're not from a cold area, like we have a lot of teams who. Come from Florida. What right. if what if you're brand new to the industry and you've never traveled? And what, what's like you said? What's this negative twenty stuff yeah. you talk about? Yeah. Again, that's Eric and I from the <laughs> south. We never we never knew about uh, um, wiper fluid freezing up. We figured it out when we showed up at a truck stop and saw it, and oh. it's like, oh, negative twenty. We should use that. Right. Like that right. clicked. But if you've got some on the truck. It may not. You may just be thinking like a lot of our teams will buy four, six, eight bottles, gallons of the of the wa- of the windshield Summer wiper blend. fluid, yeah. yeah, and just not think about it. Like, okay, I need more washer fluid, yeah. and uh, I'm in Texas, and it's it's pleasant outside, yeah. so I throw it in there, yeah. and then by the time I get to New York, and it's negative five, it's frozen. So I mean, like that kind of stuff happens, and sure. it's and and so it I, I can see that being an easy mistake for us. We started in winter, so the first stuff we ever bought was negative because we started in the winter. Right. Um, and then anti-gel. We didn't know about anti-gel until I literally gelled a truck up. Um, had to have it towed, and the cat guy, it was a, cat, a Caterpillar engine. We went to a Caterpillar dealership to get it thawed, and he actually um, was talking to us, and I'm like, it gels? And so he's like, "You, did, where are you from? And I said, I'm from South Louisiana. We've never heard of this. Yeah. 
So he actually went and grabbed the fuel filter for off of that off my truck. It was already off. It was gelled. Uh, it was on a table. He grabbed it, brought it over to a saw, cut it in half, cut it open, and then opened it up and showed me like, and it looked like it looked like a petroleum jelly. Like if you could yeah. imagine a jar of of that, wow. just in the fuel filter. It's like, oh, I had no idea. And then I found out about paraffin wax and all this other stuff. So I, I now know better. But yeah, I I completely understand it happens. We deal with a lot of it within and the fleet annually. annually, and we try to get in front of it now, which the people sure. I was driving for didn't. But we try to get in front of it now, but it still happens. It you know it just is one of those things. Can we go back to the paraffin thing for a second? Sure. So what happens with diesel when diesel fuel gels? Diesel fuel um, paraffin wax is a byproduct of the fuel refining process. Yes. So there is still paraffin then diesel fuel. So when diesel drops below for a certain temperature, that paraffin starts to freeze or gel because it's not just solid paraffin. So that's what's causing the gel in diesel fuel is that 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 paraffin wax, like a, a wax candle is paraffin wax, that stuff starts to harden and gels up and there you go. It's not going to flow through the engine. And it so. and it it starts to harden up, but it it had to be really cold to get it candle wax hard. Oh sure. Again, it has the consistency of like a right. uh, petroleum jelly. Well, you have the dilution of the diesel fuel, and that's keeping it from getting really hard. Like, yeah. But it doesn't have to get hard. Just starting to gel. Oh, yeah. That's why we call it gelling. Just starting to gel. And like you said, yeah. e- petroleum e- jelly. Easy idea. Take a straw, stick it in peanut butter, uh, peanut butter, mm-hmm. and then try to drink out of your drink. It's, yeah. impo- it's almost impossible. Yeah. It's the same concept. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Now everybody's going to try it. I know. Nobody's going to try it. Everybody's going to be like, what? I bet you somebody tries it. And then they're gonna they're gonna write us online like we proved you wrong. Yep. <laughs> we are able to well, what straw did you use? Uh, uh oh, well, a it, boba. Straw. it was <laughs> yeah, it was one of those bo- exactly one of those huge yeah. milkshake fatty <laughs> straws. Exactly. All the keyboard warriors are gonna be just going at it. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, but uh Thank y'all for all being with us. Uh, this weekend, we had so much fun. The Outer Brook crew got to hang out, and I thought we'd dialogue about that. Uh, dialogue about it. What? Well, Next. where are you? Yeah. Next on the British Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> um, dialogue. Cheerio. <laughs> yeah, fit, fit. It's uh, going to say Jerry says, or Jerry, and then it's going to say Patrick. <laughs> it's going to be very dialogue. It's going to have it all word for word right underneath it. That's uh, well, captioning. Yes. Uh, this past weekend, we stayed at a campground. And I honestly don't remember the name of it, but it was A.W. Marion. Yes. Hag- Not the Marriott. The Marion. The Marion. The Marion. Was it yeah. Haggis Lake? Har- Hargis Haggis. Lake. Haggis. <laughs> no. Again, we're going <laughs> back to the, the, okay, the motherland. Yeah, let's do this one. <laughs> we were in Circleville, Ohio. We were campground. just outside of Circleville. Just, just outside, outside of Circleville. Circleville. Yes. Yeah. Um, just a short jaunt away. Yeah, so we wanted to test out a couple motorhomes and see how we if we liked them or not. Um, I have one. It's not really testing to see if I like it or not. Um, several years ago, we had a, a motorhome, did a bunch of trips with it, and uh, four years ago, you sold you you sold this. Story. Yeah, you've told this. Story. Okay, so four years ago, sold the motorhome. A couple months ago, yes. well, a few months ago now, we went and bought it back and brought it back to Ohio. So this is our first chance to take it out. Remember how to do everything, make a list of everything that's broken and to fix and all that stuff, right? The good news is the broken list is very small. That's awesome. I actually thought it was going to be more. But the but the relearning how to use it. Oof, we'll talk about that later. (laughs) Uh, And then y'all stayed in the motorhome, and that was your first go in that one as well, right? Yes. Yes. It was a lot of fun. It was was, uh, very explorative. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good word. (laughs) Yes. It was was fun dewinterizing it and then realizing there were valves that hadn't been opened or hadn't been changed position. Yeah. Oh, that's why the hot water didn't come into the shower and you took a cold shower because this valve was closed. So that was all a good learning experience. Great learning experience. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, Don and Jerry, y'all came down and hung out with us one day. Uh, I was gonna say one night, but really, you were there so long. You were there part of the day too, and um, I had so, I just had a great time. Melissa, uh, pretty much acted as chef in command. Some good food, uh, great food, thank great you. Food. Great food. It's always better over a campfire. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she literally cooked over the campfire. I that blew me away. Yeah. Really, didn't think I was gonna do that. I did not think you were gonna do that. So this had one of those uh, fire rings. 
that are steel, and then they have the the metal grate for the grill that just kind of like flops over it. And it looked uh, is well used the appropriate yes, term. It, oh it yeah, well they always look well used. Yeah. It looked well abused. There was animal droppings. stuff droppings all over it, and uh, so they you know that just made the burgers tastier. <laughs> It uh I told Melissa put mine right there on that big old white splotch. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so um You're terrible. But what did you do? You 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 ended up bringing out and it looked like a perfect fit. Yeah. So I have like a a pancake griddle is what I would call it, a long rectangular cast iron, cast iron griddle and um I started the fire, um got it going good and then I kicked the coals over. Because you don't want flame necessarily under yeah. there. And I kicked the coals over and um, laid my skillet on there. And I started with bacon. Because um, you got to grease the pan you properly. The pan. Yeah. you got to make and sure. And the way that their, their grate was, <laughs> it, it actually naturally tilted a little bit. So everything just drained. But it didn't. It was very George Foreman-esque. Yeah, very but it didn't. George Foreman-esque. Like the grease yes. didn't drain into the coals, which then caused this big flame. Not right. the way that I had everything set. No, that was the last then, night. We'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, then you just feed the fire on the other side, and you just keep moving your coals over as you continue to cook. But I did uh, bacon, um, and then Eric jalapeno wanted poppers. some jalapeno poppers. They were got a little messy, but they turned out really good. They got messy, but they were delicious. They were delicious. The cheese they, kept falling out. And yeah, they weren't and burning. Well, a little bit of cheese burnt, but they weren't burnt. Like <laughs> no, that was my concern. Was like, how are you going to cook this without having a huge burn part? But then I was like, eh, you eat around the burn, so who cares? But they came out. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah, perfect. And then we threw some burgers on there, and um, did that. And then I knew the next night we were going to do um, brats. So I actually got the brats out and I kind of par cooked them a little half and half. Mm -hmm. So um, they'd be kind of mostly done and have that yummy flavor of, you know, the bacon and burger drippings right. and, and everything and on there. And they, the fire. and they didn't even make it to the next night. They made it to the next morning. They did. Um, <laughs> they and were then breakfast. They were breakfast. Right, yeah. Part of what you have is like um, a grill. Um, a barbecue, yeah, a little gas, propane, little gas propane. Yep. Um, and so I actually sliced those brats for the next morning and uh, then just kind of reheated them, got them nice and finished cooking them as well. But to clarify, she cut them in half. Yep. And then sliced them down the middle. Yep. And put the middle section face down on the grill. Yep. I yeah. kind of butterfly which, them. Which fin yeah, butterfly them, which finished cooking them, but also gave them inside a little bit of char, yeah. crispiness. Then flipped them over and it was like yeah. one gigantic piece of bacon, really sausagey bacon. When you're all said and done, yeah. they just were really good. They were tasty, um, very tasty. And that's all we had for breakfast. There was no eggs, nothing. We nope, that was it. That, we just mounted this down. And then again, we did do um, the filet mignons, back and bacon wrapped, and mm -hmm. then salmon fillets and some shrimp. Yeah, two pounds yeah. of shrimp yeah. between the four of us. And also to be, I like delicious. to clarify that the first night there, we weren't cooking on the grill. We had a nice big campfire blazing, and we flipped over the yes, grill. Yes, we did flip over so the grill. So that we burned off oh, we all of the organic yeah. material. I mean, we didn't cook directly on it anyway, but no. still, just, just made a we little We did charcuterie appetizing. the very first night, the yeah. night we set up. Yes. So, and that was yeah. delicious. It was really you and, great. You and Eric got the charcuterie set up. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was really place. good. We have a few pieces left, I'm hoping. Tonight, we'll, there you go. we'll wrap that up. I love camping over the fire. <laughs> we'll you wrap know, that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. If you're timing it just right, you know, that it was not super hot, you know, because your coals mm. are barely underneath it. Right. And, and the flame is more on that side of the smoke. And, you know, it. I, I think it just makes food taste so good, especially when you're camping. Yeah, yeah. it does. And then again, also put that bacon grease on there, or bacon on there to get that grease and, and have that soak Seasoned. to the meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On top of putting the strips of bacon on the burger. The burger yeah. really just, yeah. and you had a couple, a uh, couple different types of cheese too. So yeah. it just, it was, it was, you know, why go camping? Really, just to have a different variety of food. Sure. And then we just simplified it. No veggies. There were no pickles. No tomatoes. No onion. Yeah. Like we just made it just simple. The peppers, the poppers, the, the poppers. poppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, I really around. enjoyed the jalapenos. I told Donna we'll try to make those. Yeah. Yeah. They were good. You would tell you how to make them. Well, it seemed kind of easy. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's like a, three ingredients. There's a real easy way. Okay. Go to a store called Kroger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun. There's a market we went to 
to get the food for our May the 4th slash Cinco de Mayo party. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Latin market. I'll tell you where it's at. But they had these huge jalapenos. It'd be great for poppers. Oh, yeah. Nice. Great for poppers. Nice. The trick is to get all the seeds and any of the white pith on the inside, which they call a rib, to cut down out. The heat. Oh, yeah. And in fact, most of them turn out almost like a bell pepper if you get most of that out of there. Right. And then all you have left is this that jalapeno flavor. Yeah. Which is different than a bell pepper, in my opinion. We've actually had, um, well, large poppers with a uh, home chef quite a few times. Nice. Well, those are poblanos, but yes, I, I yeah, agree. Okay. A little yeah. different, a little smokier. Yeah. Peppers with cheese and meat in them. There yeah. you go. Yeah, those end up being really I've had those with you, and those are really good. I had fun. I had fun. It was a good time. It was a good time. We yeah, um, The weather held that. out. The weather did hold out. It only rained at night when we were sleeping. Yes. And uh, we were able to get some hiking in. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we did another activity. Yeah, that was pretty much it. You know, th that was the weekend of camping. Really? Had, had, yeah, it was. It that was, was a it. Good time. I'm it was forgetting good time. something. There we, was no. There was nothing else. There was nothing else we, to talk about. Did we go swimming? Nothing else that matters. Uh, no, mm. no, we didn't go swimming. No, we did not, we did go, not go swimming. No, 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 no. The 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 lake there was not a swimming lake. They didn't have. You couldn't swim from the shore. Correct. There was a uh, beach. You, they had a designated boating and swimming area. You could swim there, off your boat if you want. There was to. no beach. No, there was no beach. There was sand. I called it on mud. The, there was, that well, was mud. muddy, sandy, muddy that angled slowly into the water. And which, then it dropped right off. It did drop right off? Yeah. Okay. Well, well maybe that's why right they were swimming. But. Yeah. So you can swim off your boat if you wanted to. Yeah. In the designated swimming area. So, yeah, it was it was a nice lake. It was a really nice lake. It was Where was the designated swimming area? I don't know. Was it around the corner? <laughs> Probably, Yeah. Probably not far out, just around the corner. Just a little there. bit to the yeah, right. Well, the right we the, brought we yeah. brought all our kayaks out there, right? Yeah, we did. And uh, wow. fishing gear. Fishing gear oh, yeah. for two of us. For two pe two people's worth of fishing gear. Two two rods go in, one comes out. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> we. Uh, I think that's enough of that story. I mean, the lake was nice. The water was glass. Weather was great. I thought it was awesome. So I, you know, Eric and I. We're not fishermen, so we, we just got in the kayaks and started, like, cruising around the lake, as you do. And, uh... Yeah, so it was a good time. Good time was had by all. <laughs> was that all your right. first time kayaking, period, ever? Have yes, you kayaked before? it was my it first, was your time first time. It was your first time. Kayak, yeah. I thought that. Yeah. I was surprised at the amount of blue heron that were flying oh, around. So yeah. many it blue heron. It was a heron. beautiful lake. So many. Beautiful lake. A lot of wildlife. Yeah. A lot of grass. Yes. Like, around a lot. They actually planted fish to eat the grass. They planted fish to eat the stocked grass. They planted, they planted herbivore fish herb to to eat the grass in the water underwater because it's so much. It's so grassy. Is it so really called planted it. the fish? They planted the fish. Yes, is what it's called. Yeah, it's is called it? seeding. Usually, it's I thought it was called seeding or yeah. stocking. Stocking. They stocking, stock. Planted. They stock the lake with with fish. Same thing. Is it called? Leave us a comment below. What, what do you call it? Yeah, I know it is planted. The, or stock stocked. the lake with fish. Stock the lake with fish. That's what I thought. Yep. Yeah, they stock the lake with uh, grass perch. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, with grass perch. It's a fish that's native to like Thailand. A lot. But it can sustain itself sustain itself off of eating grass. That's cool. So that just keep. I mean, it's a grassy keeps the algae grass, down. Grass keeps the algae down. It's a grassy lake to begin with, and they just keep maintain. They're it's a lawnmower. Like they're, they're, they're lawnmower. They're, they're your, your I lawn like care it. Uh, they're a donkey. They're the landscaper. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like a, a, a goat. pack or a goat. A goat. A goat. That's what yeah. I mean. A goat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, if, exactly. so if you're fishing and you catch one of those yeah, fish. Yeah, release it immediately. Release it immediately. So even if nope. you wanted to be mean, you don't keep it? And no, get? You, you, you can't. Legally, you have to keep it. You have to if you get caught with it, it's a big fine. Yeah, huge fine. Oh, cool. Yeah. Otherwise, it's called poaching. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, and not poaching in olive oil. It's... <laughs> jail. Well, yeah, that was a good time. I'm really glad we did that. Really glad we did. Are you going to share? What am I sharing? So Eric and I, we are, uh, we're just cruising the bank, right? And we got a little away from y'all because y'all are fishing, you know, yep. casting and all that stuff. And uh, I don't want to get hooked because that's also called poaching. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> You have to release me immediately as well. Right. Um, if we can get you to stop <laughs> writhing and yelling and screaming yeah. with this needle right. in your arm. Yeah. Uh, and we're doing good. 
and I hear Melissa scream, and I turn around quickly, just in time for, I'll let you take it. What happened was, <laughs> I knew there was a story somewhere. Yeah. Here. <laughs> um, we fish with light tackle. We're not going out for big fish. We fish with relatively light tackle. And this lake had small fish in it. It had bluegill and crappie and some larger bass mm -hmm. and channel catfish, which can be really big. And those fish don't know, oh, he's not going after me. I just see food. I'm going to eat it. Mm. So a channel catfish caught my line and uh, what? took my, my line. I, I threw me off balance in the, in the, in the, yes. in the kayak. Yeah. And um, I, I went. Ass over tea kettle into the water. You did. I did. That's how you went what? Ass over tea kettle. I'd never heard that one before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't very it's far okay. away. I saw the rock of the boat. I thought he was going to save it. <laughs> I almost did. You almost did. But that did. fish was pulling me. Yes. Um, I paddle over, and he says, will my oar float? <laughs> And I said yes because he's trying to, I was holding he's the oar, trying to grab to everything. Water with one arm. Right, he's yeah. trying to grab everything. Um, as you're going in, most people, if you've ever been kayaking <clears throat> on a lake or in a river or anything like that, if you're going over, you want to try to grab your oar or whatever you know, your fishing tackle. So your phone. I yes, I said yes. Your oar will float, just like your life jacket's keeping you afloat. <laughs> and he stopped. Oh, he stopped trying to tread water. And fighting it all. And he's like, oh, you're right. He actually told me that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> and then I said, take a breath. What can I help you with? And he's like, here. And he comes up and he's got this huge box of tackle. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, out of everything you grabbed, you grab that. And so I took it. And then I'm like, where's your phone? He's like, it's in my pocket. I'm like, okay, at least we still have a phone. Who knows if it's waterlogged or right. not, but at least we have <laughs> a phone. Um and then he was trying to flip the boat over. These two came back over. It wasn't going to happen. There were some nice people that started kind of off with us on the bank and then were out. They paddled over, and he made the suggestion for Vince to just swim with the boat over, the kayak over to the shore, mm -hmm. which was all of 15 feet or less. Yeah, it wasn't that far. And he's like, and it'd be easier to flip the boat, right. and it'd be easier to get back in. Yeah. So then I go back over there. No, you also had the backpack in your hand. Yes, so I did have the backpack. So in my you had backpack. Oh, he had the backpack too. So he had the fish and tackle in yeah. one hand and the backpack in another, and trying to fend for the oar. Yeah. And I think that's why he was like, "Will the oar float?" So we have a backpack, like a hiking backpack, full of tackle between the two of us. You chose to take it on your boat, and you actually saved it. I strapped it down on the strap yep. from the kayak. Yep. Yeah. And so you handed me that, and that thing was so yeah, happy. So happy. It was yeah. so water. It's all drying right the, now. But the, the first thing I grabbed when I went over was my glasses. It was because you've so been in this. Before. I've been in this before. So I grabbed my my glasses weren't weren't off my face very far. I got my glasses on my face, and then it was okay. What's going on? Yep. So at any rate, we all got back in. And all in all, um, I thought you lost your water bottle, but you actually had put it in the backpack. I did. Hence the reason why it was extra extra yep. heavy. Um, there. Well, was... I remember you tried. So I went over there to you, and I got your fishing pole. Yep. Uh, Melissa's fishing pole, the one that we. So I could be hands free. Yes, yeah, so you fight be hands free. It. And then you asked me to take the book Back sack. Yep. And when I tried to take the backpack, I started tipping over. Yeah. Yep. And we tried a few different ways to figure it out, and it was like, "There's no way yep. I'm going to flip over if I grab this thing. It was so heavy." So that's when I took it over at events, yep. and I'm like, "You hold it." I pulled in. Straight. I was, so I was we were, on the shore at this point. Yep, yeah. and, and we pulled in kind of nose to nose. I'm like, here, you take this. I'm going to back up and then come back in with my derriere in so you could strap it over that backside because it's got ropes and stuff right. back there. And that worked fine. Um, but the only thing you lost, let's tell everybody everything. out of. Well, I, I said two rods in or one leaves. Yeah, so that's I it. did. I did lose my rod and reel, unfortunately. Yeah. But, phone was uh, safe. Phone was in our pocket safe. It actually worked. Yeah. You know, I, I did. <laughs> it's funny. All of our I, tackle. I plugged it in last night, and when I wake up this morning, I didn't realize it hadn't, didn't get a full charge. Uh, so I get yeah. in the truck to leave, and I plug it in, and it gives me the alert, water's found in your lightning port, and blah, blah, blah. So I just left it unplugged. I had enough charge from yesterday. I was fine. Uh, but iPhones are water-resistant up to three meters for half an hour, I think it is. Uh, so just that quick dip in and out was not bad. Uh, I know that that's that, far. That, that it's not guaranteed that 
they, they don't guarantee anything if it yep. gets wet. But thus far, it's working okay. Tomorrow, when Patrick calls me to chew me out about something, it may not work. <laughs> <laughs> all or, in all, or, you... Or when Kelly calls and says, yes. I need this truck sooner, it probably won't work. You got back in the boat. I got back in the boat. Yep. The, the, I mean, the, the shore was very steep. I get to the point where I can stand up, and I'm thinking I still, I'm still too low in the water to try and get them. The, I take one step back, and I'm two feet higher than I was. Was Another very step big. back, and I'm, you know, at my shins. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It was a very steep bank, and I was able to climb in and get back out there. And, and then we went and tooled around and had a great time. Yeah, had a great time. Yeah. Yep. Had a great time. Yep. We were out yeah. there for a while. We found, were. Found a little island we, we cruised around. Yeah. It was overcast but warm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't feel it was windy to where, like, you had to take it, because I took a sweatshirt, but it wasn't, like, windy where it's coming across that water. In fact, it was glass. There was like yeah. no waves or ripples, and it made it very nice to just tool around. There was a point where I literally looked at you and was like, this water is glass. Like, there's yeah. nothing. You couldn't. It was insanely pretty. Sure. It yes. would have been nice if the sun was out, but also we didn't melt. Like, it yeah. was nice. No, and you didn't feel like you needed good. to take a dip. Yes, yeah. correct. It was, it was yeah. comfortable. Then I might have, if it was sun was out, I might have considered joining Vince. Let's jump around. Right um, water's fine. Not right there. I'd have gone to the. You know the, the swimming area, but still. <laughs> Where w- was that over? I never found it. I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know. It I was thinking maybe the day park over I, by the bridge, I, uh, the dam. Could be. But you had to I swim off from your boat. You couldn't swim from the yeah. shore. Interesting rules. I've never yeah. been in a lake like that. We had fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Again, sad to see that. But for all you fisher people out there, you do know that when you sacrifice tackle to a lake or a river, that means that the fishing gods will give you back. Even more. So as soon as Vince gets a new fishing rod and reel, we're going to go fishing, and hopefully he'll catch a big one. Tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> I oh, already you found already... what I want. No! Vince has the reel, but the rod on sale. Nice. Tomorrow. Nice. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. I can't wait. I did ask for permission first from Melissa. But it fishing. happens. That's... I get it. It does happen. I get it. Wait till you take the child out and teach him the first time. And they cast? Yep. And Which, the whole pole keeps on going. What child is oh, that, <laughs> that sounds so like there's a mystery that's why there. You start, yeah, right? Typically, you start with the smaller little, you know, princess and uh, Shrek reels and right. rods and the whole all in one for twelve bucks. But no, that typically will happen. Is there were a few of those in our our time? Is mm. they don't understand the you still have to hold on, even though they watch you. Right. It's just their little brains aren't Putting quite all navigating all together. Yeah. Working on coordination still. No. Yeah. So, anyway, there's a story. Yeah, so I, I'm sure we're not the first family. In, in all honesty, there wasn't a channel catfish that took my rod and reel away from me. It just, I don't know what I did, but I got all discombobulated and bloop. <laughs> That's how it sounded, too. <laughs> it is kind of how it yeah. 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 Yeah, there wasn't much of a wake. It just kind of like yeah. went was, right in. I, I got a 9.9 from the Russian judge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd terrible. give you a 10 for what you saved in the end. Well, thank you. You lost the rod and reel. You. you lose two points. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it's not me. It's the rule book. No, I get it. I mean, I, I appreciate the 9.9 from the Russian judge to make up for some of that two points. Yeah, but... absolutely. Nice. Well, yeah. they were going for style. They you, were. you know, yeah. it's, it is great difficulty to dive off of a kayak <laughs> sideways. It truly is. It truly <laughs> is. And little splash, yeah. It's, there was it's a, an art. Jerry's like, I know there's a story in here somewhere. That's the story. There you go. I was waiting for it. They're sticking yeah. to it. Yeah, it was a good day. It was a good well, weekend. Well, I, I thought it was yeah, funny in, in the notes. Vince sleeps with the fishes. Is that what swims. you wrote? Sw- I, sw- oh, swims. Swims, yeah. swims with the fishes. I'm I, like, did, I did. I did make sure and put it in the appropriate way. Yeah. But our Godfather fans will get that. Uh, but it was really cool. And then uh, I tell you what, it's workout too, man. Oh, yeah. You spend a couple hours on a kayak, yeah. your upper body just, oof. My my wrists were hurting. I mean, like, my, my wrist, the, down, the forearm was wrist yeah. area. They were hurting this morning from just listening to the paddle. So. Yeah. yeah. Got yeah. a good good workout on that. And the hike. And the hike, yeah. I think I had a lot of pretty things going. We got back to the campsite and sat down, <laughs> and I got in that chair, and I'm like, oh, I feel it now. Like, it took that long yeah. from, because this is a weird part. The campground is on the other end of the of the lake, and it does not connect to any other part of the... You have to drive around to get to the marina. Yeah, you have to, to drive on... Your kayak. Yeah, yeah, but not like drive on park roads. You no. have to go on like a highway. Yeah. 
to get there. You have to drive back through almost like town, but not town. You yeah. Know. You're passing houses and the Dollar yeah. General and all this they're stuff. They're on opposite it's... sides. It is very strange that they're not connected. Yes. Um, so that was weird. And we had to use GPS because there's no signage telling right. you how to get between Until each place. Until you get to that last turn before. Yeah, the last there. turn. It says campgrounds. But you got to turn like... five times before you get there. So. It's weird. Exactly. It was a very odd situation. But so we got so it took me that long from pulling the kayaks in and cleaning everything out and getting rid of all the water in Vince's kayak for some reason, the only one that had water in there. I don't know why. Um <laughs> and uh you know, just getting everything back to the up in order and then literally back sat in that camp chair and I was like, Oh, I feel like I just got back from the gym. Yeah. Like really just like, oh, I haven't felt this in a hot minute. And then of course that's when we did the the steaks and the salmon and the yeah. shrimp for our... It was a nice replenish. Uh, it was very it was nice. Very nice. Kind of an early... It was the early night because we stayed there and then y'all got up the next morning and headed into work and... Um, yes. Eric and I had a little more to break down, but we were able to do that and be out. I go well. there again. I would too. Yeah. It, the one bad thing about the campground is the water and the sewer are not at their site. Right. Um, so you got to top off your uh, water tanks when you get there. And if they run out, you have to break camp and go get more water yes. and then come back. So that's a little bit aggravating. But if you know that going into it, you can plan. You sure. can ration your water sure. accordingly. Sure. So, no, it was a great place. It was, it was fun. I was so glad that uh, Don and Jerry were able to come down, you know. It was a good conversation. It was. You know. It's so funny, Not too. Not work. It's weird how when we get in those, we work really hard to keep. Work-life balance. Yes. It doesn't always happen, but sure. we try. It was funny, too, because we were out of wood for the fire, um, so Eric and I ran up to the store and grabbed more wood and came back. They had a rule. You couldn't scavenge for wood, which I hate those campgrounds that do that. <laughs> if you've got dead wood on the ground, let me let me get it and use it in the fire. Otherwise, you're just putting your woods at risk of fire. So anyways, we went and got that, and we came back uh, and then had a, a conversation and everything, and then... Once y'all left, it might have been the next day, was, yeah. uh, we were talking about something, and they were like, yeah, you know, Jerry told us this, and Jerry told us that. And I'm like, when did y'all talk about all this? <laughs> and it occurred it occurred to them, oh, it was while Eric and I were out with the wood, and y'all just had a great old conversation about stuff. And I was like, hmm. We did. And he, she, he was a little hurt that. I was. When you weren't there, we were supposed, we were to, sit supposed to sit in silence until they got back. <laughs> just stare silence. at each other. I think it was Melissa turned to look at me and was like, "Were we supposed to just sit here in silence?" And I'm like, "I don't know, but I missed out on apparently some great conversation. I got a little butthurt." We talked about some vacations and other things. And yeah, just, it was great. It was a good time. I saw that we had a couple articles today to talk about. Sure. Uh, Vince said nothing, but you did, Melissa. I did. And I've got something to mention. Mine's so quick and short and sweet. All right, let's have it. TA Express. Actually, TA opened three new truck stops this last month. And one of them is an Express, and it opened in Grambling, Louisiana. I thought you might know where that's at. I do. Did I say that right? Grambling? Close. Well, there's probably more of a draw. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I say say it a little more laid back. So TA announced the opening this of this new store. And it opened on May 29th. Amenities at the new TA Express include quick serve restaurant, Jimmy John's, which doesn't actually come until September. So don't think you're going to get yourself some Jimmy John's now. Okay. Um, six diesel fueling positions with diesel exhaust or DEF. Hmm. 31 trucks parking spaces, more coming, two private showers, laundry facilities, and a dog park. I'm assuming this is a small little area. It's got to be. It says it's an express. For yeah. two showers, yeah. And six. How big is this little city? Tiny. Yeah, sounds like it. There's a school there. That's it. Does it. Is it before you enter a major city? No. No. Oh, okay. It's uh, basically in the middle of nowhere, North Louisiana. It's along the highway, though, uh, the interstate. They must have felt a need for 31 spaces and possibly more to come. It does say yeah. it's the third, again, of a TA location to open this week. The company opened truck stops in St. Rose, Louisiana. That's south. And yeah. Jonesboro, Arkansas. Well, that's not in Louisiana. That's opening up three. 
Give you some more spaces to park at. Well, it seems optimistic because, um, you know, TA's been on the struggle bus for how long now? And these um, didn't say renovated. They said new. Yeah. But you think about, um, remember the whole deal with BP buying them and everything? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, we were all kind of curious what's yeah. going to go on with that. And this is encouraging to see, see sure. some improvement. We haven't heard much about that recently. We haven't. I don't know if it's still That's under, if it's done or if it's still under review or what. Maybe they snuck it in under the radar. It could have, you know, I, uh, that was close to the time where JetBlue and Spirit were going to buy each other. So that mm. maybe took bigger news or whatever, yeah, it could but have. it's, uh, yeah. It's definitely interesting. I'm curious how that did shake out. But but still, I don't like the TA Expresses. When we were out riding, I, I th when I think of TA, I think of a full service right. truck stop. Sure. Yeah. So when you show up and it is an express, it's yeah. kind of disappointing. Disappointing. To um, say the least. Yeah. So I did I definitely prefer the full service TAs over them. And again, when I was driving years ago when we started, TAs were nice. They were not worn down like they are now. Um, they were really, really nice places to go and, and, and get showers and everything. And they had huge driver's lounges and country pride was freaking licious. Um, uh, but they just didn't maintain that level they of didn't right. keep the money pouring right. into maintaining. Correct. It's like, kind of like they thought, well, if we build it nice, then we don't have to worry about it. And it's like, no, you still have to maintain. Well, I think some of that is they have a captive audience too. You know, you have drivers that have to go there for fuel. Sure. Uh, and so, doesn't matter what it doesn't looks matter. like. Doesn't matter. They're going to use us anyway. Yeah. So, I don't like that attitude. I don't either. I mean, sorry. I really don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just kind of how it used to be. Sure. Petro's square tile showers and stuff. I mean, they they were known as like the nice truck stops, and right. they weren't ever really that great because by this point, Loves has started doing their really nice places, and um, Flying J and Pilot had some really nice stores. So, the, the, as an as an industry, the truck stops are getting nicer. Period, because they have to, which right. I think is cool. Sure. But yeah. what's the store in uh, Castaic? Pilot. I actually like their showers. Which one? The Pilot in Castaic. Where's the that? whole area is a little. No, are you thinking are further north? No, the bigger one. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, there was a Pilot down there. Yeah, Castaic. So Just the north showers of Los are. Angeles. The whole area is a little ratty, and it's always so busy. Most of it's reserved parking, I think. It's like the first place you can kind of stop. They did put the new one in up on the hill or whatever. Right, but you're right. It is the first place as, as you're leaving L.A. on I-5. Or entering. Yeah, or the yeah. last place entering. Yeah, It's right there outside of Santa Clarita kind of thing. But anyway, I always thought their bathrooms were nice just because we typically use Loves. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that anomaly when we would go west yeah. that we would use their showers. Right. Um, and I just always thought that. Their showers presented so much better than the exterior. Their store was pretty decent, mm -hmm. too. They had a nice deli case of some sort and all the hot the, the, yeah. chickens the store and whatever. was nice. Yeah. yeah. The outside was a hot mess. Yeah. Hmm. Is this the one where, like, half the yard is gravel? Yes. And it's And huge. a big, huge uh, power tower sits right on the backside, back, out, back by the um, pumps. And it's like 200 trucks could park there? No. No. Oh, what's the one half, I'm thinking half of? The yard wasn't gravel. It was all paved. Oh, oh paved. I don't know which one I'm thinking of. But their their landscape is gravel because it's oh, California, yeah. of course. Are you thinking the one up uh, in Lebec, just north on I 5? Might be. That, it, oh, that's, that one's That was huge. an older one. It's huge. They've remodeled it. Yeah. They've yeah. Completely replaced the store. Um, so I guess, we're, sorry. That's okay. It would be Ramali. Rebuilt the store completely. The Denny's there is no longer there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that was, that's been it's been a few years now. I mean, after since you've been off the road, of course. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's a huge truck stop. Yeah, huge truck stop. Of course, the one in Ontario is still there. Oh yeah, both of them are there in Ontario still. We never so. use their bathroom, their showers. I don't think we ever use their showers. No, I don't think we do. We were typically in and out though. If we were there, we were staying at our parents' house or using their yes. shower. Yep, because they were not true. they're not they're. 20 minutes away from that. Trip I stop, spent so. many, many, many nights at the Ontario. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right out front. And I remember their laundry room is massive. Is it maintained? Uh, it doesn't look it on the outside anytime we would be there. I would say no. Yeah, there was always a few broken machines. But when you've got 60 machines or whatever, because, sure. it, again, it's huge. Yeah, but whenever you open up the machine and there's a big old dog yeah. you know, white inside. Ooh. Yeah. They don't clean How it. How about the showers? 
No. Oh, no. I don't remember them either. Don't touch anything? Or your shower shoes, for sure? It got to sure. the point, to the end of our time out on the road, it got to the point to where we would deliver in L.A. area or whatever, and we would automatically drive to Barstow. Barstow. Wow. We just would wow. not even go there. I mean, paying the $25 a day to park. Right. yeah. And nasty facilities. We well, see, that's that's all different. That came after me because back when I was back when Eric and I were driving, sure, you could park out front for free. I remember the the the, the truck stop being cleaner, riffraffs a little bit because of where you're at, but still, sure. reasonably nice. Uh, I can't remember the showers at all, but I know we used them because L.A. Um, I told a lot of people this for when Eric and I used to drive on the weekends if we were going to be down for two or three days, we always had a deal. We were either going to get a rental car or a hotel. We're not going to get both. And Los Angeles is a place that we get a rental car because there's so much to do sure. and drive around and sure. see that I'll sleep in my truck just to be able to explore. Right. We would we would stay at that Petro out in the front with all the other FedEx trucks and Panther trucks and whatever. And so I know we showered there. I know we, I remember doing laundry there a few times, but I don't. Recall much more on the inside. I know they had a rental car place in there as well. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But it is interesting, but we never used them. Very Enterprise, old cars. yeah, Enterprise was really close to there. Sure. So we'd go there. They opened up the new um, one. What? Where is that? At? Up by Palmdale. That new one's kind of out in the desert, which, kind of between Barstow, the new loves between Barstow and Oh, and Boron. Boron, that's a nice one. But, but it's, even it's out in the middle of nowhere. If you're passing through there across fifty eight. You're going. You're coming across I-40, and going to Bakersfield or San, the Bay Area or North. Or north. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, it's per, it's perfect the place to stop in there. Yeah, because uh, it's out in the middle of nowhere. But it, it's aligned perfectly on I-58 or on uh, US-58. Well, that's kind of like or is that it California 58. I don't know. That's kind of like that giant um, Petro there by um, Gilroy. Isn't there a giant Petro there? Ta Gilroy. Garlic capital of the world. Yeah, but it's on the interstate. You have to right by the reservoir, and then you have to cross over the the mountain basically to get. Oh, to you're Gilroy. thinking on the other side on, on the other I-5, side. Yeah, on I five where there's there's a giant petrol. There's a loves there. Yeah, in um, and then in Santa Kettle, Maria, Ke- Kettleman, Kettleman, yeah. is that where Kettleman. the is that where no Kettleman's further oh, south. Yeah. I'm thinking um, San, Santanella. Green pea Santanella soup. Santanella, where, where Anderson's think, split, split pea soup is. Okay. It's in Santanella, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I remember we stayed there once. We had a long weekend, and uh, we ended up driving into whatever that town was right there. Not over the hill, but right next to it. Okay. Got an honest. Enterprise rental car there, and then um, dropped the truck off at the at the Petro, and then right. we went into the city. Yeah. And uh, How fun. What was it about two and a half hours, something about like that? that. Yeah, and that. and had a great time. It was the first time in San Francisco, and it was nice to do it in a car, not a truck. Yeah, of course. Be able to hang out and uh, go drive down Lombard Street and all. You know what I mean? Just oh, all yeah. that stuff. Go over the, the bridge. We went yeah. over to. Be um, yeah, be tourists. We went over and did the. Uh, uh, Alcatraz? No. What are the trees? North of the bridge. Oh, the Redwoods. There's a park there. The giant Redwoods? Yeah, the giant Redwoods, but there's a park there. I can't think of the name of the park. Um, but do that. And then, of course, doing uh, one of my favorite city parks of all time is Golden Gate Park. Yeah, I love park. Golden Gate Park. It's a beautiful park. So being able to walk that and just spend hours there and just had so much fun. Um, well, that brings me way back. Like, way back. I remember back. those days of exploring, well, you know, yeah. feeling like a tourist or... Yeah, Gotta do the same thing. thing. Yeah. We, we parked at the truck stop and got a car. We would. Spent three days in San Francisco. Wow. Did the whole tourist thing. What truck stop did y'all stay at, though? I think it was that area okay. that you're talking about. Yeah. Because it's not that far. You're you're within a couple hour drive, you know, yeah. with traffic and everything right. to the city. And there's a few options, too. Like up by Sacramento, there's uh, a couple 40, truck stops. 49er. Or, yeah, 49ers. Places there. You can drive in the city from there. And then uh, north of there. There's some more truck stops. Um, so, I mean, there's there's options to get in. There's not, like, options – are not good options s- to use the subway to get in kind of thing. No, no. there are not. Um, no. There are not. It's one city we didn't explore. We did do, I think, two pickups I can think of that were a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And it felt like you were exploring, but definitely nothing like getting out of the truck and going and, you right. know, fresh yeah. fish. Or, but it definitely took you down a little – yeah, San Francisco is a fun. Uh, that would have been fun. It's a fun city. It's a busy city. It's an expensive city, mm-hmm. so it, you gotta 
I think a lot of people have the family matters ideology of like, oh. or the Mrs. Doubtfire oh, view right. of, yeah. of San Francisco. You get out there, you find out it's not that. No, nope. um, but it is still a really cool, really cool city. I enjoy. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went to where they filmed. Did you? We did a boat ride and went out to Alcatraz and that's cool and all that. Did you we walk got, Alcatraz? No, we just did a boat ride. They take you by it. They like circled it, and then they take you under the Golden Gate Bridge and turn around and oh, come that's back. That's cool. Nice. And Don didn't get sick. No, he didn't. Wow. I've got pictures of us on the boat and everything. Oh, how awesome. fun. See, there's all these great joys of driving. I just, you know, you got to find the you got to find the beauty in, in, in the work. You really do. Yeah. Um, you really do. Well, what well, was your article about? Uh, uh, this was interesting. It's business side of things. And um, so those of you that know trucks, you've basically got three big companies, right? We've got Daimler, which owns Western Star and Freightliner and Detroit Diesel. Then you've got uh, Packar, which owns Kenworth, Peterbilt, DAF, which is big in Europe, Packar engines. And let me back up. Daimler also owns uh, Mercedes-Benz trucks in Europe. Daimler, Packar, and then you've got Volvo, the Volvo group. Uh, Volvo owns Volvo. They own Mac. Of course, they build their own engines and transmissions. They brand them Volvo and Mac. They didn't have a lot of separate companies. They're pretty pretty tight on what they do. If um, I wasn't aware, like if I was trying to educate myself, um, how how is Pat Carr spelt? Because I hear you saying it one way, but I honestly, I, I, I've heard you always talk about them in your yeah. presence. But if I was going to go Google, it would be very... P-A-C-C-A-R. Oh, yeah. That's definitely not how I would spell it. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's... The others make sense. Sure. Yep. Um, <laughs> and then, like I said, Volvo Group. Um, well, Daimler... Freightliner, Western Star, DAF, I'm sorry, Freightliner, Western Star, Mercedes-Benz in every country but America, um, Detroit Diesel, and Volvo Group, Volvo Mac, and Volvos all over the world are teaming up to form a partnership for um, to establish a, or to develop a common software operating system to uh, for future commercial vehicles to make everything standardized. It's interesting because you've got two companies, and they're going to be 50 50 in this. Mm -hmm. They're massive companies. They are fierce competitors. Um, they all have literature about why their product is better than the other person's product, like like very serious cutthroat. Um, they are not friendly at all. And here they are working together to build this new software platform operating system that all these trucks within the two opcos can work on simultaneously. The article says that they are um, they're working together to provide uh, differentiating uh, digital vehicle features for its products, enhancing customer efficiency and experience. Um, and they want to set the standard, the industry standard for a truck operating system to offer to other OEMs as well. And they do actually say. Uh, 50 50 um, joint venture and potentially other partners to be involved. So, this may end up being something that a pack car or, or someone else that's smaller Signs jumps up. in. I, I think what that looks like, too, is if you're building an a operating system that can work in a Volvo or a, a, a Freightliner, if your partners, the guy who makes the widget, yeah. If he can write software or his his firmware to just that one software package, and it works on both trucks, yeah, great. Because then his costs go down of not having to engineer the part to work in different operating systems. Yeah, if they both work, if it works one part, he can he can develop that works in both trucks or one package. I mean, it doesn't have to be a part necessarily, but one thing that works on both, then great. It cuts his cost. It cuts um, Daimler's cost and Volvo's cost because they're working together. They're hopefully sharing that um, that brain trust that they both have of engineers and software developers. Hopefully. You know, it, it sounds hopefully. like a great. Uh, hopefully, yeah, it sounds like a great plan. All I, can, I, mean, I think it sounds great. All I can think about is Windows. You have oh, sure. one software that goes on tons of hardware. Right. There's nothing but clashes and problems. Yeah. yeah. So Be because well, uh, yeah, I, I get that. Uh, there was there is good news here though is that both of these companies Daimler and Volvo in 2020 
established another joint venture to develop hydrogen fuel cells. Mm. And that mm -hmm. looks to be, I mean, we don't see here a whole, a whole lot about hydrogen fuel cells, but uh, the joint venture name Select Cell Centric includes operations in Germany um, and the headquarters of Mercedes and Fuel Cell with, productions in Germ with production facilities in Germany and Canada. So it looks like it's worked at some point with the two of them. <laughs> Hopefully they can get it together and it'll work against as well. So. Absolutely. And, and, and so like a lot of times people think, what is the purpose of having, like, what do you mean you have one operating system? I think people are curious about that sure. too. You were talking about those parts and pieces, right? Mm -hmm. I, uh, so Eaton Fuller is a big transmission maker. They're probably the largest transmission maker on the planet right now. M Allison might come close, but Eaton's overall, their portfolio of products and services is bigger. Um, so if they make a transmission, uh, the, the new Eaton Fuller automatic uh, 629, right. they have to make a Volvo version of it. They have to make a Mac version of it. They have to make a, a Freightliner version of it. They have to make a... Um, Cummins version of it. They have to make a a uh, Pat Car version of it. They got to make a oh my Western goodness. Star version of it. Sure. And so, even though it's one basic transmission, all that stuff has to be added in there, so it knows when to shift and it knows when to to decelerate or or when to uh, use a uh, um any kind of braking system right. for the engine that lock up in certain ways. So, it really does add cost and complexity. It also hurts the supply chain because if Eaton builds, you know, a ten thousand or nine thousand transmissions, three thousand go to Freightliner, three thousand or Daimler, three thousand go to Volvo, three thousand go to Mac, right? Our, our Volvo group, you know, uh, Pat Car tears their three thousand, and Volvo's like, we well, don't really need but a thousand. We don't need three thousand. We thought we did, but we don't really need them. Right. Well, tough. Those transmissions are the built. Horse. They have yeah. that processing power on them. You can't do anything with them. Uh, same with Freightliner. You're kind of stuck with what you got. If you have an operating system where they all speak the same language, well, now all of a sudden you're buying one transmission that's good for anything. Right. And if Eaton needs to rebalance its inventory because, hey, these people aren't taking as many as we thought they were, their projections were off, that's fine. I can resource them, put them somewhere else. Uh, Cummins, same thing. Cummins puts engines in all th for all those brands, and they could easily... If they had one computer to talk to, that would make simplify things. And now with all the new emission stuff coming out, right? Uh, there's a lot of like people that make emissions components are are bailing. They're like, yeah, we're good. We're not doing this anymore. It just becomes that much more important for the existing ones to talk to each other and be able to uh, agree. So I do agree with you where the Windows thing is. You know, there's clashes all over the place. I do think on something like this, they could build it to where there won't be clashes because it is so much smaller of a group and they're so much more tight knit. Um, I think the difference in the Windows analogy is Windows is a third party all its own and they weren't building PCs when they built Windows. Correct. They were writing to what was available and then when you bring in the Compaqs and the IBMs and the Hewlett Packards and the Dells and all those manufacturers, and they have their own software they want to add to it. And then you're bringing in hardware that is designed to a spec, but may not work with Dell or, you know, the other manufacturers out there. That's where you had the conflicts with Windows. I think this is a reverse of that, where you have the manufacturers coming together to work on this versus telling a third party, hey, try and get this done. The manufacturers know how their hardware works and how it, what, what needs to tie in to make that stuff happen properly. And they can, they're can they working together to say, okay, yeah, we're competitors. We, we sell the same product to, to the same people sometimes. But if we can write this software where it works in our trucks and your trucks, we're all better off that way. So it's a little, sure. little a reverse of what the Windows thing was. Yeah, and, they, it, and again, they are, the trucks are getting more digital. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That was one of the things that shocked me when Eric and I started driving is how even on a modern truck at that time, it was still very analog. The uh, digital screen on the dash was smaller than an iPhone screen. Mm -hmm. But if you get a car, even a, you know, a, a more inexpensive car, it's still mostly a huge digital screen in the middle of it. Um, the radio was that rectangular two din radio that we've had right, since yeah. the 60s um 
there's no big screen there, yada yada. It 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 like everything was very very old school, and these trucks are changing now. They are becoming digital. They're they're getting the side view cameras when you flip your your sure. blinker. But if you do that, you gotta have a screen. So now they're putting screens in the dash. Well, if we got a screen in the dash, we might as well give it functionality. Let's get a truck GPS you can download to it. Let's get um, potential for hours of service integration, things right. like that in the dash. Uh, Apple CarPlay. Let's get uh, then. There's the actual, um, you know, your 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 uh, screen with your speedometer and your tachometer and mm -hmm. all that stuff. They're moving all that, it's starting to be more and more digital. To where you can now buy a fully digital panel. You don't there where there's zero analog gauges. Right. Um, so I mean, like as all that stuff creeps forward, having a uniform language to speak, sure, I think will make it easier for then to get parts and pieces and supplies to repair people. Yeah, your mechanics. Oh yeah, the repair. Possibly that's a kind of a different right to repair issue. Yeah. Actually, the next I happen to scroll up the next article talks about that. We. That's not on our list. We'll discuss that another week. Is that both companies provide their own end-user applications on top of the platform? So having this this jointly designed platform doesn't mean that all the trucks are going their displays are going to look the same. Yes, their displays can look differently and have different functionality, but that underlying software will be the same. Well, and a good example of that too is um, if you fly like. I fly a lot, and you've been in an airplane in the back of the seat um, in front of you. There's a, a television screen, mm -hmm. and you can watch it and, and enjoy it. And if you're on Delta, United, American, they have different content. It looks different. It's all different, right? All of those systems, every single one of them is running on an Android. Is it Android-based? I think it's Android-based. I would assume. Probably, uh, yeah. I've seen it before. I think it is Android-based. Um platform so they all speak android and then the, all the developer had to do is cater it to delta right. or cater it to right uh american or cater it to united or cater it to emirates or whoever else all of them are using the same platform i was gonna say it's either google or it is google which is android yeah, yeah it is google. Andro I'll do that. android's free yeah y you can download android yourself and and put your own skin on top of it yep it's 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 so that's the kind of language they want to come up with is they want to get an operating system where they can do that. As the end users, we won't really know it because we're seeing the Volvo product or the Freightliner product. Makes um, sense. But in the background, it's just operating that operating system, so right. it speaks to each <laughs> Which other. Which company yeah. do you think reached out to the other to? Like you said, they're so competitive. Who who did what for an olive branch here and? Let's come together and see what we can do together. And it, it now feels they're like, working together. It feels like this may have grown out of their their fuel cell venture that that works so well together. Oh. So it's like I, I, it probably went back before that to where they decided to come together and work on this joint fuel cell venture. Yeah. And then at some point in those conversations, it was, hey, why don't we do this? But that's a good question. What do you think about? That's a good question. You think about fuel cell? There's so much technology has to back that up. I could see this being. Something where it's like branched out of it. Okay, well, we're on the Volvo side, we're doing this. On, right. the, on the Daimler side, we're doing this. You know, one speaking Swede, Swedish, one speaking German, and they're like, well, if only we could figure a way to make it find all the same, language, yeah. find a common language yeah. to speak. Yeah, I, I just think it would. I, I don't know who, who extended the olive branch. Yeah, but I can absolutely see it coming out of that partnership. Sure, and potentially even more down the road. You know, um, as we become more competitive, we also become more connected. Sure. So it's. Sometimes sure. they always could it be an outside source reaching out to both of them saying let's do this together, or is it more the two of them? You think again? I know you don't know, but just some food for thought maybe. I don't know if something this big, if an outside source would do it, unless it was an outside consulting group maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. that Possibly. suggested it. But I mean, they're saying it's a fifty-fifty partnership. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. The outside group would have to have some. Oh, body that would in, make I sense. Think, but good deal. Unless they're hoping, like the outside group would be hoping to supply the. Right. The infrastructural backbone could be. or something, yeah, but could be. Uh, cool story. I don't know. I mean, again, you've got two ginormous companies, mm -hmm. right? Um, saying we need to work on this together. It, it's fascinating. I, I really do love it. And 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 I don't know what you know. Going back to that, what is Volvo and Mercedes Benz doing? Because if they're working together, then I could see that trickling down sure. to uh, the heavy duty side of things, right? Because um, Mercedes Benz cars 
recently broke apart, but they have for a long time been, it's been Daimler Benz. Right. Um, so they've all been one big company. And like I said, even in Europe, if you see a Mercedes Benz commercial truck, it's a Daimler truck. It's not even a, technically a Mercedes Benz truck. Just like here in America, at a Mercedes Benz dealership, you'll see a Mercedes Sprinter van. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's built and made by Daimler uh, trucks. It's not made by Mercedes Benz, but it's still branded under Mercedes Benz. Interesting. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 a cool, I don't know. I love the the big business side of things is always interesting to me. And why do people choose what they do? And sure. Sure. Uh, I think there'll be some cool things coming out of that. Very cool. I think we need to talk about a couple things real quick. Sure. Some housekeeping. Sure. This is the last episode of the podcast, or of the, of the. I really got to stop saying that. This is the uh, last episode of The Outer Belt for uh, about two months, roughly. For this season. For this season, yes. For this season. We'll be back with you all in a couple months. Um, traveling schedules, summer scheduling, it's just all over the place. And we just realized we can't make a schedule that works. So, uh, sadly we are going to stamp the end of it and outer belt season two will be over and we'll be back in the fall with outer belt season three. Um, and really looking forward to that. In the meantime, as you run into people and you see them, feel free to share our content. I mean, just cause we're not putting anything out right yeah. now doesn't mean <laughs> they won't appreciate what we had before. Um, I'd love to come back with a whole host of topics to talk about. Oh my gosh, I was so scared you were going to say to a whole new set design. I, and be I, like, I, I can't, do it. I can't really do it. I can't do it again. No. I oh, no, finally have topics. found no. the set I like. I might consider changing our two chairs. Um, not crazy about the ones that we're in. Yeah, but well, the, I think these are better than the ones we started the season in. Absolutely. You know, those after a half hour, I'm like, okay, can we be done now? Yes, it was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but these these are a little more comfortable. You are you are correct uh, about that. Um, I'm going to talk to Jerry about the lighting in here, and maybe we can do some changes with the lighting. A little possibly, brighter, possibly possibly camera angles and stuff. So okay, it'll be more behind the scenes Jerry fixing stuff than the rest of us. What? I'm good with that. Got ideas? No, I have none. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what ideas? None whatsoever. I think it looks good. Oh, that's hysterical. So it's uh that time of the episode. It's that time again. Keep going. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I thought you had more lyrics. I did. Right. I couldn't think of they it. Just it just to me. Zipped. Yeah. Um, I hate when that happens. You ever start talking and you don't know what you're going to say? You're just hoping it comes mm-hmm. to you yeah. as yeah. you talk. And then you're like, I don't, this isn't working. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is that time. We have made it to Patrick's Weight Loss uh, Final Challenge Season Two of the Outer Belt Podcast. Whoop, whoop. We're going to talk about. The final weigh-in. Ooh. But first, we have to acknowledge our sponsor of today's event. Uh, and by that, I mean sponsor. the non-sponsor. The non-sponsor, the one that we don't get any money for. Um, Octavia. And today's fueling is going to be the Octavia Chewy Chocolate Chip Mix. So what this is, this is a Chewy Chocolate Chip Mix. It makes a Chewy Chocolate Chip cookie Ooh. um and i i don't have the white square little but it would be like piece of the last paper episode if like you that it. Right. so you just pour this in there you add a couple things of water stir 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 throw it in the microwave and boom bob's your uncle you got a freshly baked chocolate chip cookie if you do what i do i add a little bit more water than what it calls for and i don't quite microwave it as long as they say that way I got a gooey, gooey, gooey chocolate chip cookie. Nice. Now, if you're really in insanity, just mix it up as they say, stick it in the fridge, get it cold, and then eat the cold chocolate chip cookie dough. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my little hacks. Did you hacks. have one of those for your birthday and it counts as a cookie, cookie cake? cake? Ooh. Good. It's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Um, Because this is Kind of cake here. Put a candle in it. Celebrate. Yes. But that's already come and gone. So maybe next year. Okay. Um, You can also bake these in the oven. They do come out better baked in the oven than microwaved. I, I will say that. But it, it takes 10 to 12 minutes and you got an oven. And, you know, it's just right. it's effort. Um, Did you ever get these? Yes. I, I think. No. I don't think so. I think they were out during the time that we did it. Okay. Um. Really good one. Again, it's full of all the healthy stuff. It's uh, nutritionally similar to 
all the other fuelings. You can just you can have five of these a day if you wanted. Um, obviously, being a cookie, especially when it's baked, uh, I typically would have this at night sure. as a, like a later night snack before I go to bed. Um, because this plain meal plane, you literally eat from with like as soon as you get up every two and a half hours, and so by the time you're getting like late night, you still have an extra fueling usually, right. and that's where I'd, I'd use this baby for. Nice. That's a really nice, you know, watch your little TV right before you go to bed. Little cookie. Cannot go wrong. Um, so that's the last one of the season. And the actual weigh-in this, uh, not this morning. I didn't get to weigh in this morning, uh, but I did get to weigh in before the show. So this number's a little off, but I, I think it means it's a little off in the good way, right? Sure. It means I put a little weight on, so this could be a little high. Could be high. But it is 200 Sixty-five point one wow. pounds. Wow! Wow! So what since two sixty-six, something right? Something like that. Yeah. So it's about nice. a pound lower. About a pound lower, and I, I'm actually really happy with that, especially considering what you don't know as the recording audience is. Last week we recorded late in the week. Yeah. Yep. And this week we're recording early, early in the week, so yeah. it's actually quite a bit less time, a couple less days than what I normally have. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to notice not just the weight. But I'm starting to notice a lot of my shirts are baggy. Mm-hmm. A lot of my clothes are just kind of look like they're dripping off me. And I'm like, yes, let's nice. keep doing it. I can't wait to go one size smaller shirt and it makes me look fat all over again. NSVs <laughs> like, we're just going to. Nice. What? NSVs. Non scale victories. Oh, non scale. Oh, I was like, yeah. is that a new crypto? No, no. it's a car. <laughs> NSVs, <laughs> non scale victories. Uh, yes. They do yes. make you feel good. They do. You know what we should do next season? We should have a board with a running total. And every time you go to this, we go to the board and see where your weight is on that board. That's a great idea. We could do it's as a set design. Idea. Yeah. Or Jerry could just put it right here. Good. And it was roll down when it came to yes. Patrick's weight. Roll down. Yeah. Jerry's like, do y'all remember what I started with? 290 ish. 290 something. I don't remember what, what was it for the first episode? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I know it was up there. It was. I, think I was you thinking were, like 280, but... I think you were encroaching the 300s. Okay. And that's what got you on the bandwagon. I do remember that conversation. So, something high. 295.4? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Jeez. So, I am down 30.3 pounds. Yeah. That's a good season two kickoff. That's a great season two kickoff. Yeah. And finale. I, finale, I guess, yeah. Kickoffs. We should left work. We should left to do cliffhanger. I'm not comfortable with all that, but uh, I should have left a kick. <laughs> yeah, we should have a cl- cl- cliffhanger. But a a cliffhanger. Oh, and it could be like, Aww. and so my weight is. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would never, I would following. never do that to my viewers, or your viewers, our uh, viewers, our viewers, the viewers, the viewers. the viewing populace, or the listeners, or the listeners, the subscribers. So the, the subscribers, the true heroes, right? And <laughs> let's not forget the likers. There we go. You know what we should have done? Put it on our Patreon page for our Patreon viewers and listeners. We should. And side then by side like photo. Mo- a month and a half later, we can post it to the regular subscribers on YouTube. We have to say it like that. I know. <laughs> you kind of like I, I, you don't have to, but you know, it helps. I think it'd be pretty uh, cool to do a side by side, even if you're just sitting in the chair. I can tell you right now, when I looked at the video earlier, yeah, because I couldn't remember the number one was, oof, yeah, it's, it's, it's obvious. Are you feeling better? I feel so much better. Energy levels? Yeah, they suck, but okay. I don't know that. I don't know. I mean, you got to remember, I'm still a fat person. Yeah. Not, not, not a fat person. You got to remember, I'm still a large person, and I still have a long way to go. Yeah. And a short time to get there. And a short time to get there. Watch your old bandit run. So, um, <laughs> like, I still need to lose, like, really 40 pounds before I know, like, like I take a heartburn pill every morning. Yeah. I know my body, because I've, I've been large and I've been small, or not really small, but smaller. When I get to about 225 pounds, the heartburn just disappears. It just disappears. So, I know I need to get at least down there so I can stop taking that heartburn medicine. You know, I got a long way to go. So, well, congratulations on 30. Don't discredit that. I'm Thank proud you. of what you've done. Yes, me it. too. Absolutely. Gotten rid of a couple decent Thanksgiving turkeys. <laughs> the small child. It's no easy feat. No, it's not. Yeah. 
well, we're going to keep seeing how hard I can go. Hopefully, we start up season three. I'm not like, well, got it all back. <laughs> hey, guys, 295.4. Yeah. No, no, don't say that. I have faith. Oh, well, I'll try. We'll see. Uh, until next time, it's going to be a minute. We miss you. We will keep you all in our thoughts. We'll still, if we get pictures or anything or do anything fun, we may throw them out on ins- on the Insta or uh, Facebook. Um, but we uh, appreciate y'all hanging out with us over the last few months. Can't wait for season three. Very excited about what the future holds. Yeah. Uh, you know the r- routine. Like, subscribe, hit every button in front of you. If you want to reach out to us at the Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com, please do that. We read all the suggestions. Again, we're ramping up for season three, so we'd love to have all those suggestions, comments, feedback, um, recipe requests, all of it. Until next time, stay safe, make good decisions. Enjoy your summers, be safe, and don't leave money on the table. And keep those wheels a turning. Bye. Till next time. Bye.